cars? Watching life in fast cars? Where is the freedom and justice? Why keep hope when happiness pops like soap? Where is the freedom and justice? Can't breathe? Can't leave? Where is the freedom and justice? Hate misery? Hate mystery? Where is the freedom and justice? You get raped? Get interviewed on tape? Where is the freedom of justice? Goes to court? But his bad luck is not the unlucky sort. Where is the freedom of justice? He gets away? Now revenge is the only way. Where is the freedom of justice? to the Future Academy's annual UJHR performance. Right. In case some of you guys need a refresher or don't know what the UJHR stands for, it stands for Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It was created in 1948 by Eleanor Roosevelt because of the events that took place during World War II. It was designed to protect people's natural born rights. So, but sadly, to this day, they are still being violated. But my good friend Danae is working on a film, and I think she would like to do a topic on this. Hey, Danae. What? Remember that topic you were looking for? I think I have one. It's about the UDHR. What do you think? I think that's a great idea, but how? Um, go to Arroyo. I know there's some students over there who would uh, have some good stories for you for inspiration to start. Thanks, Chris. Come on, Gerardo. Let's go find an Arroyo student. Here's one now. Yeah, I myself have experienced my right to be violated. It all started when I began my new school. When I walked in, I automatically wanted to make new friends. I didn't want to be the weird new girl that sits by herself. I wanted to have fun. But I tried everything that I could think of that would get people to like me, but no one wanted to be around me, and that's when it all started. First it was the usual, me being called names while walking through the hallways, then it was a pushing around and bystanders laughing as it happened. Then my books were knocked out my head and my bag being dumped out all over the floor. And just when I thought it could be any worse, I started getting food thrown at me as, as I walked through the cafeteria. Like big chunks of food hitting me from left to right. Teacher standing right there watching and doing nothing, just letting them continue to make me feel like I was not worthy of this thing called life. At this moment, thinking, I was thinking, what's so special about life that this is how people treat me? This whole time, I was going home with messy hair, ripped shirts, and food all over me. I would go home, run to my room, and change just so my mom wouldn't worry about me. I would put on a smile and just pretend like nothing ever happened. I felt like it was my duty to make sure my mom didn't have to worry about me because I was the oldest and she had three kids total. I would constantly cry myself to sleep, and for a while, I planned the day I would just end it all. It got to the point where I just couldn't handle it anymore, and I didn't know how much more I could take. Then that's when Jesse came into my life and turned everything around. He taught me that I need to stand up for myself and no one should ever take advantage of me and who I am. I knew that no matter what, Jesse would be right alongside me, having my back through whatever obstacle that comes my way. Knowing that I have someone that I could rely on gave me confidence to stand up for myself. Thanks to everything I've been through and Jesse, who came in my life through such a hard time, made me who I am, and I can honestly say that I'm proud of who I am today.
So she told my cousin, don't be friends with black people or Mexicans. Oh <laughs>
Here, a 10-year-old goes to the doctor because he has a cough. If that was your life, would you care? No, CSE Theos get treated differently in hospitals because they don't have insurance. If that was your hospital, would you protest? Back in the day, you can go and explore. Now you're told to be careful and safe. Kids can't go outside without being afraid. If that was your town, would you change it? Kids are having to rid of toys to pick up a gun. If that was your child, would you be frightened? We are all born equal, yet life importance differs by the region. If that was your area, how long would you live? Leave that water running because it's too cold. 783 million would kill for a sip of clean water. 2.5 billion don't even have it sanitized. Now if that was your body and your mouth, would you treasure it? Now, it's not just here or there. It's in every single country you and I can think of. Someone's basic human rights are being violated. Those same rights mean you take granted every day. Now that's our world. What are we going to do about it? Wow, I'm really inspired and I'm totally ready to move on. Oh look, here's a Moreau student now. Do you have a story about any human rights being violated? Yeah, I do. One time as a freshman, I was at Bay Fair waiting for the bus. I was just listening to music and with other people around as well, not really paying attention. As the bus finally arrived, this mother and daughter came off and caught my eye. The mom was yelling at her daughter for some reason and started to become violent. She grabbed on her young daughter's hair and started slapping her. Everyone around was horrified until the mom, <laughs> until the mom became even more violent and started beating her daughter to the point where the young girl had fallen. <laughs> but the mom didn't care. She just started kicking her. Everyone around was frozen in shock. Well, what did you do? I didn't do anything. Well, what could have you done? I wish I could have literally rewound that moment and been able to intervene, or because I was so young, I could have notified the people around to help stop what was going on. Whose fault it was, how to 
cheer me. The wings at the top.
The destiny of human rights is in the hands of all of our citizens and all of our communities. Thoughts and feelings behind it, and then if you have any questions at that point, you can ask 
individuals or the group, whatever you would like. So I'm just going to open it up to the performers and start with Nicholas. Uh, okay, so uh, this <laughs> this was uh, this was a lot of fun to do because we all know each other for a long time already, and and so how we started off was we these were all real stories from each people from our class. And so it was really cool to be able to act out how their human rights got violated or someone they knew whose human rights got violated. So that's it. That was pretty good. Okay, you can go for it. Okay, hi. I'm Marty. <laughs> so uh, we worked on the performance for like the past two weeks, like nonstop, every second period. Like, three weeks? Three weeks. Two to three weeks we worked on this, and it was actually really fun because. And if any like sophomores want to take this class next year, I recommend it because it was really awesome. So yeah, thanks to her, this will be possible. I mean, it was a little tiring trying to figure out where everybody's at, but um, I don't think we, we, without Ms. Zimmerman's help and all of um, our additional help from Marina and Leanne and Natalie for their help and their advice and everybody else, I mean, and Ms. Schultz too, for, and Mr. Miata for lights and sound to help us with that. Otherwise, none of this would have been possible, so give a round of applause to them. Um, 
and this performance, um, I knew about human rights and I knew what they stood for, but this um, performance really made me open up my eyes and kind of see that it's an everyday life, even though it might not seem like it is, we don't realize it. And so if I had to do something outside after this, I would, if I noticed something, maybe not intervene, but let people know or try to figure out a way to help somebody if you see something happen or you personally try to find a way to get help or, you know, let your feelings out or just express yourself for who you are. I'm Chris, by the way. So, um, like Danae said, it really opens up your eyes to hear all the stories that, you know, going through this whole process of what people have been through and what they've actually seen, it's kind of like, wow. And also, like Lisa said, it's like only in the movies. You don't really see it around here, but then you start noticing it day by day. And you kind of got to find your way of action. So, this is what I mean intervene. If you feel like you can intervene, intervene. But let people know, hey, that's not cool to do, or that's not cool to say, you know. Do this, but it really opens up your eyes, and I would take the EPA next year. I'm just saying. Okay, so I'm Brian, and um, I think if something uh, that I got from this was that the skit that I made where I was like a police officer. Uh, that was actually a story about my cousin, and for the longest time, I spent a long time thinking to myself, um, why did he do this, why did he do this? And then writing from his perspective, and just uh, also like helping these guys out with like uh, their plays and stuff like that, I just like, or watching them perform too, it was just, uh, I feel like I got a better understanding of what the UDHR actually means, and as a person, I think that I'm sorry to change and that I don't want to do all the negative things that we do in today's society, like calling people hoes and stuff like that when we don't even know, uh, calling people gay and not really understanding what the consequences of that are, and I just think as a person, I'm kind of getting better. Any questions for any of these beautiful people? little performance here. So this is, um, we're going to show you the way that we, I think that we solidified our, ourselves as a group and we're going to share it with you. It's a way to kind of um, bring the energy up and have some fun. If you want to join in, it's very easy. We're creating a rainstorm. So you can join.
So can I get a drum roll from my freshman?